Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another day of daily Leak Code live streams here reporting from South Florida where we're getting a little bit of tropical storm force winds. It's been a little bit fun, not for the people on the west coast of Florida. And literally as I start the stream, it seems like the weather is actually getting the worst it's been all day. So hopefully I stay with electricity and I'm able to make it through this entire stream. So with that being said, just a quick recap. So we're currently sitting at 297 questions, just three questions away from our next big milestone at 300 questions. And remember that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing easy questions and Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I'm doing medium questions. So we're going to resume today with some easy questions. Hope you all tuned in yesterday for our medium session. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started again. I, I'm literally, as I record, it looks like we may be getting the worst weather of today. So maybe I'll do a shorter stream today because frankly, this stuff really interests me and I love watching the weather channel and just keeping up with everything. So we'll see how it gets because right now, wow. I mean, it is coming down. That's crazy how bad it got in the span of seconds. Okay, cool. Let's get to our next one here. By the way, if the stream suddenly dies, you know why electricity is going to go off. All right, range addition here. All right, so you're given an M by N matrix M initialized with all zeros and an array of operations ops or ops of I. AI means M of XY should be incremented by one for all. Wait, what? Okay, wait. Three by three operations two to two. So the cells of two, two and three, three. Oh, from zero to two incremented by one for all zero to two and one for, okay. Oh, I see. So we should increment all these to two and then we have zero to three, zero to, okay. Well, three, three ops is two, two, three, three, zero, two. I mean, there's sort of a, a brute force way of doing this, which I guess I guess that's how I'm going to go ahead and do it. We already have M and N and we also have our ops now initialize with all zeros. Okay. So we need to actually create this array ourselves first. So what's like the easiest way for me to, I always forget how to like do this. If we have three by three, I think I can say it's telling us that we have a matrix. So what if I say const matrix equals a new array of size M and I fill this up with a new array. Or do I have to also, you know what? I think I have to map it. New array dot map. And here, do we just return a new array of size n dot fill zero? I think we can do this. So if I do console dot log matrix, are we gonna end up with that matrix completely initialized with zeros? Three empty items, STD out, three empty items. Okay, so probably new array dot M dot map new array N fill zero. We still have three empty items though. And is that because, should I be filling these? Let me see. If I just do dot fill does this work? Okay, cool. So that does work. That's nice. So let me just go ahead and put this on a new line. And then really, I think what we can do is we can say for const op of ops. Let's actually do let's let's do some array destructuring here and say for const row column of ops. Right? Okay, yeah, we can do that. And then I can just say, this is the part that's not really maybe the best, but I can say for let, let's see, inner row equals zero, inner row less than or equal to row, and inner row plus or equals plus plus, for let inner column equals to zero, inner column less than or equal to column, inner column plus plus, can we just say, matrix of inner row, inner column, plus or equals one. 
and we, what does it want for us to return? Count and return the number of maximum integers. The maximum integer in M is two and there are four of it. Okay. So this whole time we want the maximum one. So let's think about this. Well, it's all zero right now. So the maximum one, the maximum one of any of these, I think can just be the last one that we do. There's probably already a better way of doing this without even have to do this. I don't even think we necessarily have to do any of the filling up ourselves. I almost feel like there might be a better way of getting the answer actually without doing the filling. I don't know. That's just like a gut feeling I have. Oh, and this one has no operations. Wait, what? How? Maximum integers in the matrix after performing all the operations. Okay, how is this with no operations? How is the how is the output nine? Am I missing something here? Oh, because there's nine zeros. I see. I see. Okay. So when I initialize this the first time, it's going to be zero. And then I increment some amount of cells by some number. That will be one. But then we also need to remember like the last piece of this that I filled to know how many twos there are. I mean, <clears throat> let's think about this. Maybe what I can say is I can fill in my first one. Let's say the maximum, let's say the max is equal to zero. And then right after I fix, right after I increase my first one, I can say that if the max, let's do like let max and max count equal zero. So if max is, hmm. If max here is greater than, or actually we should do this. If matrix of inner row column is greater than max, as soon as I get my first one, maybe I can just set the max to be this, max equals matrix inner row, inner column. And then let's see, after incrementing it, if matrix row, is equal to max, we can say max count plus or equals one. And then by the time this whole thing is done, maybe I should also have max count in here, like let inner max count equals zero. Here I can instead do inner max count. And then right down here, maybe I can say something like max count equals math dot max of max count or inner max count. So let me, I feel like I went through this a little bit fast, but let me even sort of confirm what I'm doing myself. I mean, this is going to be like however many operations there are times. So this will be like n, t n times n. Well, okay. Let's say like ops is like O, right? Like the, the time complexity of going through operations is O. And then inner row and inner column is R and C, right? Where R is the row and C is the column. So it will be like O times R times C. That's our, our space complexity. O times R times C as it currently sits. I'm not saying that's the best one, but I'm just kind of looking ahead here and trying to figure it out. So, and then real quick, what I can do at the end here is I can say return max is equal to zero then we should just return m times n else max count. So let me see if this makes sense. So const row column operations, I said we have all zeros, right? This is how it starts. The next one, like we're now we're going to start going through row and column of operations. So here we have two, two. And let's say we immediately increase like cell zero here by one. So matrix here is greater than max which is zero. Okay, so max is now equal to one. And if it's equal to max, then we say inner max count. So here we should end up with four. 
So let's just say max count is equal to math.max of max count zero or inner max count is four. And then the next time here, we're gonna do three and three. So let's say now we start again at zero, we increment it by one. If max count, or rather if the matrix currently is greater than max, two is greater than one, then we'll say max is now equal to two. And anytime we now find, find a two, we just also increment it by one, and then that becomes our max count. The reason I'm doing this at the end is because if we have no operations, if we have no operations, then that means max is just gonna be set to zero, which in that case, we should just multiply uh, M by N to get nine, right? Because there'll just be that many zeros. So I'm just curious to see if this runs inner row, inner column, didn't like that I okay wait zero is less than or equal to X less than a I and what what is the X here oh M means that matrix at zero one should be incremented by one so do I just need to go oh yeah zero one okay I see so I just need to fix this piece here let's run this Okay, six and four. I'm just curious for all the other test cases. Six, six, nine, four, four, nine. So we're off by two there. So let's go again and see what's happening here. So we have a max of zero and a max count of zero. For cons row columns, inner max count is zero. We're gonna start at zero, zero here. We'll increment this first cell by one. So we'll have one here. If matrix of inner row and inner cell is greater than max, which is greater than zero, we'll now set max equal to one. And then here we'll say if matrix of inner row, inner column is equal to one, equal to max, the thing that we just set it to, we'll say inner max count plus or equals one. Okay, so then we get one here. Okay, now we go to the next one. So same inner row, different column. We increment this by one. If matrix, okay, so this this is not the case, but it still is equal to max, so we increment it by another one. Okay, that's fine. And we keep doing that for all the different, let me see. We get to the next row, increment it by one. That should still be fine. So what happens out here? Max count should be equal to the math.max of max count, which is zero, or inner max count, which is four. So it should be equal to four there. Let me just remove, I think I made some changes here. Okay, so the first iteration should be equal to four. Let's now see what happens here. I think maybe I'm making a, a, a something something wrong here. So max count is say is equal to four. So in the second one, we go three, three. So we're gonna look at the entire array, zero, one, two. We're gonna go through the whole thing, but let's see. Maximum integer in M is two because these were already ones. So we increment, again, I start at zero, matrix inner row, inner column plus or equals one. Okay, so this now changes to two. That's greater than max. So now max becomes two. And if the new value is equal to two, we set inner max value to four. Okay, and then we come here, increment by one. That's now equal to two, okay. Then we come over here, but that's still zero. So we shouldn't do anything because zero plus one is not equal to max. So we should never increment the inner max count. Let us see if we could, it's gonna be a lot of printing though, but maybe I'm doing, maybe I'm doing something wrong here though. So this should be by one for zero less than or equal to X less than AI. Now, why is it less than, so, Two by two, zero, one, okay. Three by three, we're gonna do the entire thing. Return max equal to zero, we'll say n times m times n or max count. I would like to see the state of console.log matrix at the end of each one of these different loops. It's a lot to look at though. I'm getting some crazy numbers here. 
zero, 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 we have one, one, zero, one, one, zero. So let me see what what's the best way of me doing this? Maybe I should only I should only do this at the end. Yeah, let me do it at the end of all this console.log matrix. And I don't want to see all my example test cases. I only how can I I can't reset this? Three three two two three three. Just do this. So two two zero two two zero. Okay, so there's already something wrong here. Why are we Why are we setting it equal to? Why am I setting it equal to two two zero matrix of inner row inner column plus or equals one. And then five five three. Max equals inner max count. We're let inner column inner column less than column for row column of ops. All right, because we're getting two two. I'm guessing this is perform all the operations. Zeros in an array of operations. Ops where ops of i a of i means that m of x y should be incremented by one. How is this? How is this two two zero after that first one? Two two zero two two zero. When I go to my next inner row, inner row zero plus one and then plus two, that's not going to be less than row. So why would this still try to increment? Do some old fashioned console login. Let's see what we get. Inner call, inner column. Let me remove this console log. If this, again, like I already see, I mean, we know that the question is not a, a very good one according to this, right? So we should have zero, 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 one. Okay, one, zero, one, one. That's for just one iteration. Zero, zero, okay. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And then we can go zero, 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 one. Uh, wait. Oh, I'm losing my place here. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So zero, 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 one, zero, two. I must be doing something here really wrong. We should only go from zero to two if the inner row is zero. Inner row is less than row, inner row plus plus for let inner column equals zero. Inner column less than column, inner column plus plus. Inner row, inner column, okay. We increment inner row. That's extremely confusing. It must be something so dumb that I'm doing. Because all I'm, I mean, I'm just going for const row column of ops. I should just be getting my row and column here. I only want inner row to go less than two and inner column to go less than two. We should do all that once. And then using the same matrix, we get to the next four const column. We again start at zero, zero less than so it should be zero 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 one zero two one zero one 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 two. That's what we should be seeing. And for whatever reason, that's not what we're seeing. Let me remove this and let me just set this now. Zero 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 one. Zero 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 one zero two one zero one 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 two. Okay, two zero two one two two. That's fine. Output is six. That also shouldn't be possible. 
I think I'm, I think I just have my logic a little bit wrong here. Obviously, I have my logic wrong here, else the answer would be correct. Let me get some water real quick. Drink your water if you have some next to you. Probably at this point, might just move on to the next question. Not really feeling this one, and we've been spending, like, I think a little bit too long on it. Too much time on it. Oh, wait a second. Max and max count. That's not good. That shouldn't be there. Did I change that earlier and I just never saw it? Oh my God, don't tell me. Okay, no, still the same thing. Six, six, okay, yeah. Let's just go to the next question. I, I'm not feeling this one right now. Image smoother. Definitely not gonna even bother with this question. I mean, look at these, look at this like to dislike ratio. That's insane. I think this one, this one sounds good. Longest palindrome. Okay, there you go. Given a string S, which consists of lowercase or uppercase letters, return the length of the longest palindrome that can be built with those letters. Letters are case sensitive. For example, AA is not considered a palindrome here. And this is, S consists of lowercase and or upper English. Okay, that's annoying. But I think that's fine. Because a palindrome, like, let's imagine you had a string. Like, what if we had an even count of digits? I think we need to consider an even count of characters and an odd count of characters. So if I had, like, A, A, B, B, right, we can do, uh, like, ABBA, right? That would be, like, the longest palindrome. So in case of all even characters, we can just take all of them, and that will be the length. Now, if we have an odd one, if we have like three C's, for example, what can we do? Uh, we can still do ABBA. And I think we can do this, C -A, -B -C, A, B, C. Yeah, we can just stick one everywhere. So it's almost like, I think we can take all the evens but we only take one odd or actually no because the odds all the odds uh, let me see if we have like four a's and two b's and like five c's and then we have i don't know like three d's we can take the six here we can take the four a's and the two b's we can also take four C's and two D's. But would that work for all of them? A, B, C, 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 D, D. We can take all four C's. We can take two D's. That's six. We can only take one odd. Okay. We'll see. What would the answer here be? How many twos? We can take, we can take all four. We can take all two. And then here, it's just however many twos fit in here. So here will be, we can also take four, and this is two. So I feel like the answer can be what? Four plus six plus four, this can be 12. So if I had four A's, two B's, one, two, three, four, five C's, and three D's, we said the answer was going to be 12. So let's see if that's right. Okay, 13. So why is that the case? Because we have... Can we take all five? Okay, we know for sure we can take all evens, right? So that gives us six out of the bat, out of the cage, or whatever the saying is. Now we need to figure out these two here. I feel like we definitely could take at least two Ds which will give us eight. Now, how many, can we take all five C's? Because we're afforded, oh, we're afforded at least one odd, right? I think we can take four C's to make 12. And we can always add one more odd character. So that would give us 13. I think that's how it could work. So it's almost like, Let me see. 
I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I think I think the answer is you take however many evens you can, and then if you have any of them left after doing that, you just take one more of the odd. I think, I think that's what we can do. Now, what's the best way for me to say this? Since we have uppercase and lowercase letters, we could stick everything in like a fixed size array of size 128. So we can map every single character to its like respective place. And then maybe at the end, what we do is maybe we just take, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I'm gonna create an array. I'm gonna create an array that's gonna hold all the frequencies of these characters. So let's say const character frequencies. I'll set this equal to a new array of size 128. We'll fill this up with zero. And then I'll say for const C, where C is character, for const C of S, what I can do here is say const index equals c.carcode at zero minus 97. And then I can say character frequencies at index plus or equals one. And then I'll create a new variable called longest. What I wanna do is essentially what I just did now. If I come up to a frequency that's even, I'll just add the frequency directly to longest. If I get one that's odd, I gotta sneeze one second. All right, I'm back. I have to put that on mute real quick. So what I'm thinking of doing is as soon as I see one that has if I see one that's odd, I'll I'll take in however many twos I can take in. Um, like if it's one, yeah, if it's odd, I'll just subtract one. Okay, let's say it's five. If it's five, I'll subtract one, that's four. Four divided by two, that's however much I'll add to my answer, and then I'll just add one to account for the odd one. And maybe I can have some Boolean that says like, if I've already taken an odd. Um, so let's set, let's say, odd accounted for equals false. And then maybe what we can do now is we can say for, and actually I wonder if I can, I can probably reduce this. I wanna try that out. Return, return character frequencies dot reduce. Here we have an accumulator and a value. I'm gonna start at zero. Okay, so if our value if the value modulo two is zero, here we can just return accumulator plus, uh, I think here we need to also get, let me see, accumulator and val. Oh, we can just return accumulator plus val, right? Which that's gonna be the frequency itself. Else, so now it's odd. Uh, let's see, else if, I guess we can say if it's even, okay, else if means that it's odd, but we only do this if the odd is not accounted for, else if not odd accounted for, right, what do we do? We're going to say, let's see, const, mm, const evens will be equal to, I guess we can do, let me think about this, math.floor of val minus one divided by two. Here we can say return acc uh, accumulator plus evens plus one, and that's what's gonna give us our extra odd one that we can do. And then we'll make sure to set odd account of four equal to true. Account or accumulated plus evens plus one. And let's also now get rid of longest up here. So what am I doing here exactly? Like this is just a reduce function, which is gonna take, it's gonna look at every single, it has an accumulator, right? We start at zero. Every single value in character frequencies represents a frequency. So if value modulo two is zero and just, just to make sure, you know what I should do? I should say if 
if val let me think about this because i'm also going to be doing this for uh, zero frequencies and i don't want to do that i mean we can say i mean i could i could also just wrap this whole thing and say if val is greater than zero Oh, but then we always have to return something, right? Well, let's just see what we get here. So if val, if val modulo two is zero, that means it's one of these even frequencies. We can just return accumulator plus the val, which is the frequency. So like here, I think here I had five and three, right? So we'll add four for the first one and then two for the next one. Yeah, no, I was, I was thinking that Steve for sure, but I felt like, I mean, that's probably a fast enough operation that uh, probably optimizing it uh, would be like a it's like a moot point like I probably don't even have to do it anyway but I just thought to maybe optimize it by just skipping ones that have zero frequencies Bogdan the best says hello hello to you as well Bogdan and thank you so much for joining when I think Bogdan isn't that the guy from Breaking Bad Breaking Bad Bogdan that's the only Bogdan I know the Bogdan from, from Breaking Bad. So if that's you, that's awesome. And if it's not, it's still awesome anyway. Okay, so we do this and then for for ones that are not even and accounted has an odd has not been accounted for, what we'll do is we'll subtract one from the vowel. So right, we'll do five minus one, which is four. We'll divide that by two, which will give us two. So then we'll add two to Oh wait, no, I don't want to add. I don't want to add evens, right? Actually, what I want to do is add val minus one. Because that means I can take at least four of them. Yeah, maybe we should just do that. Maybe here I'll just say const even is val minus one. Here I'll say even plus one. So here we just do five, five minus one is four. So we'll take all four, but then we'll also take the five. We'll take, okay, wait, we'll take even is five minus one, which is four. We said auto count of four is true. And we'll take the accumulator, the previous value plus even, which is four. And then we'll just add one. So that way we account for that odd one. And then the next time we come around, if it's three, Oh, but see, then what happens here? This is this is also, we don't we don't want this. Maybe we only need to add one. Maybe we can always just get. I think I'm I'm thinking. I think I maybe have a better solution. I think we can always like okay. If it's even, we take everything. If it's odd. If it's odd, we always take, yeah, I think, I think this here, I think we don't need this. We can just do that. And then let's see, we set it, we set it here, const even val minus one. That's how many we can take. And then what do we return? If not odd accounted for, then here we return this else we can just return uh, accumulator plus even maybe and I know I feel like there's some op there's some nice refactoring I can do in here but I just want to like get the answer first let me remove all this and see what we get so if odd is not accounted for let's also set odd accounted for equal to true and let's go from here and see what we get Kind of went through that pretty quickly oh 13 and 13 look at that that's awesome let's run through all our different test cases seven one seven one all right let's submit and see what we get fellows output zero and expected six yeah okay wait i definitely messed up something here because this should fit is it gonna, oh, wait a second. I don't actually need to do minus 97, right? 
because now I'm not trying to normalize it into an array of size 25. I think I can just take the character code itself. Oh wait, let me, let me add this to my test cases. Okay, 716, 716. Nice, 99.53, love, I love that number. So close to 100%. Yeah, so what happened there was, I'm so used to subtracting 97 here because oftentimes we're dealing with lowercase letters that I try to normalize it so that way it fits inside of an array of space 25. Hey, what's up, John Taylor? Good to see you again. Good to see you. So in here, this this a lot of uh, edge cases happening here. So what what are the different cases, right? Like, I guess we can say, yeah. Let me let me rewrite some of the stuff in here. I think I can do if val val modulo two equals zero, then we'll return accumulator plus val. Else if it hasn't been accounted for. Else if the odd one hasn't been accounted for, then we can do const even, and we'll essentially do all this. Else, what do we re return here? Accumulator plus val minus one. Wait, where did I get the where did I get the minus one from? Oh yeah, const even is val minus one. We're still doing even in here. Const even, const even. So this is if it's. So let's say let's say in the case where we had the five and the three. So the five is not even. So it comes in here the first time where odd is not accounted for. It gets the evens, which is just val minus one. which I guess here, if I do accumulator plus val, I guess I can just add all of them once, right? Here I can do accumulator plus val. I don't even need to do this piece because the first time that it's not accounted for, I could take all of them. And then the next time, if it's, it's odd, so it doesn't go here, odds are already been accounted for. So now we just do accumulator plus val minus one. I think that's like a slightly better way of doing it. Yeah, I was waiting for you to say something, Steve, because I think you helped me out in the one that it was a uh, same tree. You helped me out in that question that was like same tree and we came up with like a very clean, clean algorithm, which I liked a lot. So that was cool. If I think about some bitwise operations, Let me see, like is every, oh, it's just based on the fact that like an odd number will always have a one bit set at it as its most, as its least significant bit. And an even number will have zero. So, I mean, that might be, okay. So I'm, I'm make I'm going somewhere with this. Now, how do we, how do we set that here? How do we make, how do we account for everything though? Else if odd accounted for. Okay, so I mean, I get how we can do that, but then odd accounted for. That's the part that I'm a little confused about because how, how would I, Hmm. How would I know? Actually, wait, before before I even get to that, I want to see something real quick. If val modulo two equals zero or not odd accounted for, we'll set odd accounted for. Will that actually work if I do that? I just move this here, but then if I also, if I put this in there, and then move this up here, will this still work? 
Okay, no, that won't work. Pipe dream, just getting excited there. Oh wait, no, let's remove that, put it back there. I get how we can figure out if it's odd or even that way. Oh wait, all the branches are related to the parity of the count, so you can always add all the bits that aren't the least significant to the total, and you can do something similar to track whether you've ever hit a one in the least significant bit. Man, I wish, you know what, let me, can I log on to Twitch here? So I can see your chat because like I lose, I lose the chat. Welcome. There you go. All the branches. This is like double inception here. All the branches are related to the parity of the count. So you can always add all the bits that aren't the least significant to the total. And you can do something similar to track whether you've ever hit a one in the least significant bit. You can always add all the bits that aren't the least significant bit to the total and you can do something similar. I'm not, I'm not really in too sure of what that piece means that we can always add all the bits that aren't the least significant bit to the total. But what we could do since our, since I'm already like compiling this follow up list, let me do this. Let me go to follow ups here. Let's do this. Let's do this one here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy your message. If you ignore the least significant bit, when you add, you'll only ever be adding an even number. But like, okay, if I ignore the least significant bit, so if I ignore that first bit from the right, but what if the, what if the bit after that is a one? Isn't that effectively like, couldn't that also be considered like an odd number two? If I just ignore the first one, but then the second bit is also a one. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just picturing it maybe like a different way. Let me save this here. Oh, what was I listening to on Spotify? Oh yeah, I'm like a huge fan of like the new cyberpunk like anime and I've been like blasting this song like all day. Anyway. Um yeah, 10 in binary is 2. Oh, and I think you probably wrote something else here. Nope. 10 in binary is 2. So if you ignore the least significant when you add, you'll only be adding an even number. All the branches are related to the parity of the count, so you can always add all the bits. I think I need to think about that a little more before I just like bust it out on stream right here. But I do appreciate I do appreciate the advice. And the good thing is we have it on this list. Like these are questions that pretty much similar advice has been given to me by other people of questions that I need to come back to, to try better things out. And did I also add this? I guess we can also add this to this. That way we like remember everything here. Okay. For now, I'm just gonna go to the next one though. Oh, did I lose my spot? I did. Now I'm gonna have to do all the ordering again. Algorithms, easy. It's weird, because like sometimes there are medium questions that I find easier than easy questions. But I think that's just because a lot of documentation has been written about these medium questions, so people end up reading them, and now there's like a ton of knowledge on them, so it becomes sort of easier in that way. Okay, so we did longest palindrome, best time to buy and sell stock. I have done this question before, but we can go over it now. This is a, wow, look at look at this ratio. It's nice. It's definitely adding this one, right? You're given, oh, you're given an array prices where prices of I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, return zero. So I think the way that I would do this is I start at like seven because we always want to find the lowest price and then the highest price. So 
it's like if I start at seven, let's say seven is my current minimum. And I'll actually, maybe I'll label this as MI or I don't know, just like M, but then it's like, okay, let's just say M. So M is my current minimum. Okay, so seven, then I get to one, one is less than seven. So now one is my new minimum. And now as I start moving forward, let's say I have like N, N is greater than five. So here we can calculate a profit of five minus one, which is four. Then here we can say three is greater than one. So we can calculate another profit. That's three minus one, two. Six is greater than one. That's another profit. That's five. And then N is greater than one. That's another profit. That's three. The highest profit we made is six minus one, which is five. Now, really, the thing is, is like you want to you want to can you want to keep adding up your profits as long as the current number you're on is greater than the minimum one. If you find another one that's less than the minimum one, then you reset the minimum to be that. So I think a good example can be maybe something like this. Where like our minimum is seven and then four is less than seven. So we set minimum to that. But now n like five is greater than four. So the profit is five minus four. But now we get here where three is less than four, so our new minimum becomes this. And then we come over here, three and six, maximum profit is three. Then we get here, maximum profit is one. So we return three in this case. So let's see if we can just like code that up real quick. I think the way that I did it was, uh, let's do let profit equals zero, let max profit equals zero, Yeah, super popular problem for easy, sometimes mixed in with mediums. Yes, for sure. So for const price of prices, max profit here should actually be, let me see, not the max profit. Maybe we need to find, maybe, maybe like the min price, max profit. Maybe I just need the min min price here and min can be infinity. So I can say if price is less than min price, then here we say min price is equal to price else. Let's see, we can say profit is equal to math.max of the current profit or the price minus the min price. I think that will mostly get us there. So if I do this, let's come back here. Min price is infinity, profit is zero. So for price of prices, if seven is less than min price, yes it is. So min price is now equal to seven. Now we go to the next one. One is less than seven, so min price is equal to one. Uh, five is greater, so now we say profit, what's greater? Zero or the current price five minus one, it's four, so profit is four. We keep going three is not less than min price. Yeah, I think that will get us most of the way there. So let's do this. And I think at the end, we can just return profit. Five and five, you see like, sometimes like I'll solve these questions, but I've done this question so many times that I promise you, I like I didn't learn anything new by doing it right now. I mean, it makes me feel good that I at least still remember the concept. I mean, for me, this is like a classic two pointer question. And I think that if you draw it out, you'll see like, well, I can't see the solution anymore. I used to be able to see it when I had, I used to have like Lico premium. Actually, I have a question about that. And maybe someone on the chat might know. So if I buy Lico premium, can I, sh can I stream myself doing premium questions and like talking about the answers with you all? Or is that going to be considered like, oh, you're, I'm kind of like giving away content that would normally be behind a paywall for free. If anyone knows about that, please let me know. Cause at some point I would like probably at some point when the channel becomes more popular, I one I want to have like a contest where I give away lead code premium to someone. And then secondly, I'd also like to get premium myself. So that way I can also stream premium content because I think that's also very valuable. So Steve said, 
I don't know what their stance is, but I've seen plenty of people do it before. So, yeah, I have to I have to find out. Honestly, like a long time ago, probably this is probably like a week after I started. So this is back in July, but I messaged their I don't know if it's like their HR team or like their company email that they have on their site. And I asked them about like using their name as part of my YouTube channel, like Leak Code Live. I was like, is that okay? If it's not okay, I'm totally down to like change it. But I just wanted to see if they'd even respond and they haven't yet. I'm sure they get a ton of emails every day. So I'm gonna have another water break. Again, stay hydrated. If you have water, drink some water. All right, Let's see if we can get one more question in here. <clears throat> Find winner on a tic-tac-toe game. Tic-tac-toe is played by two players and B on a three by three grid. Rules of tic-tac-toe are, players take turns placing characters into empty squares. The first player A always places X. The game ends, okay, wait, what, what, what do we end up with here? A wins, they always play first. B wins, uh, no one wins here, it's a draw. The game ends in a draw since there are no moves to make. I mean, oh, we're given, players take turns, given a 2D integer array where indicates that the ith move will be played on grid row, return the winner of the game if it exists. Well, I remember doing like a UI project once with tic-tac-toe, by the way, I don't think we'll have time to like fit this into like my normal one hour, but I mean, something I would, probably do and this says who goes first i move will be played on grid row column i return the one of the game if it exists a or b you can assume moves is valid the grid is initially empty and a will play first yeah i mean if i remember correctly in this project that i did what they would essentially do, I think it's almost it's almost somewhat like the Sudoku question, if you guys have done it. So we fill up our moves here, and then as we're going along, like for every single move that is made, we can check all the horizontals, we can check all the verticals, and also all the diagonals. And think like think of it that way and we'll get the answer. So that's one way we can do it. However, I'm not sure if that's the best way of doing it. I thought I thought we were going to maybe be given this full board. But no, it's like as they're playing. Yeah, I'd probably like more time to be able to like think this one through. Let me see if we have another one. Okay, let's do this one because I've done this one and I think this one would be also nice to like show. On a stream, let me see. Apples, I love Lee Code. Oh, have I done this one? Given a string S and an array of strings words, determine whether S is a prefix string of words. A string S is a prefix string of words. If S can be made by concatenating the first K strings and words for some positive K no larger than words.length, return true. If S is a prefix string of words or false otherwise. Okay, so. I love leak code words. I love leak code. It can be made by concatenating I love and leak code together. It is impossible to make S using a prefix of R. Now this has to be in the same order. Oh, it has to be the first K strings. Okay. I mean, can we just concatenate them and then check with the word? I feel like at any point, like we'll add Okay, so I can start adding, I can start concatenating words. If I ever get to a point where my concatenated word is greater than this length, right? So if if new word is greater than S, that's gonna be false, right? If new word is less than or equal to S, I guess I should specify that I'm talking about length here, less than or equal to S and new word is equal to s return true else at the end if i if i ever get to a point where none of that happens i can still return the same condition so let's see if we can get by with doing that so let's do 
let new word. I guess maybe we can just do string concatenation instead of normally I like to do I like to create an array and just push directly to the array and then join the words. But maybe I'll just do like purely string concatenation here. So let's say I do for const word of words. What if I do new word plus or equals word? If new word dot length is greater than s dot length, return false. If new word if new word is equal to s, return true. And then I guess at the end, well, I don't even need to return this. Let me see, because I'm, I'm I wonder. I wonder if I can just do. Let me just see what this returns real quick. Maybe I went through this too quick. Might not even be the answer. Okay, that's true and true. Because this will be apples. I love Leetcode. code. Okay. True and false. But I'm wondering if I. I don't, I don't even think I need this piece, right? Because if I go through all the words and I get to a point where my new word is less than word anyways, I guess the only thing is this will help me. No, I, I don't, I don't think I need this here. This wouldn't really optimize anything because I'm either going to finish this and be at a point where new word is less than S or New word is greater than s dot length, in which case I return false. At the end, we can just compare. So I think we can just do this. Or not. <laughs> new word plus or equals word. If new word dot length is greater than s dot length, return false. Oh, I see. Because we can still get to a point where apples is less than. I love leak code. Okay. Oh, but we never like we had the word and we never checked it. Okay. So I guess we do need to have like both. True and false. Now maybe maybe we don't even need this one here. Let me just remove this. All right, let's go ahead and submit this guy. 47.55. Now, as I'm going through this, I think something that we can do that's better is we can use a couple of different pointers and essentially, because instead of having to create, instead of having to create a string here, really what we can do If they have this here and I have this here, let's see. I think all I need to do is what if I have an index that starts, what if I have a pointer that starts at I? So if they're the same character, then I'll increment it. Then I get to love. So L is the same character, O the same character, V the same character, E the same character. I come here. These are all the same. Same character, 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 and then we increase. So then at some point, I will be equal to the length of S. And I guess that can be the point where we know that we have. That can be, well, is it? No. Oh, but it needs to be. It also needs to match, right? Like if at any point. Yeah, if I make it all the way to the end, I think that's good. I think that could be one case because in here, if I add apples, I can immediately return false because A is not equal to that first letter. I think that's an improvement here because we won't have to make a new string. So we won't take any time complexity here. So let's try that. Let me actually comment all this out. Let's have this be like let index. I can say for const word of words. Let's see. I want to go through each individual word. I can say for const C of word again, where C represents the character. So if C is not equal to S 
of index. Here we can return false. Else we'll do index plus plus. So let's see what happens here. Let me again get this and let me get I love leak code. Okay, and we have our index here as I. So for const word of words, we have for const C of word. So let's say C is here. If C, which is I, is equal, is not equal to S of index. Okay, so they are equal, so we can return or we can increment index, and then this is done here, so we come to our next word. You're still making new strings because JavaScript doesn't have a car type. Every time you access a string via index, it has to return a new string with a single character in it. Granted, I imagine the JS engine will optimize that. I did not know that. Uh, let me check this again. Every time you access a string via index, it has to return a new string with a single character in it. Granted, I imagine that the JS engine will optimize that. That is inter interesting. Strings also have a starts with method. I had no idea that that's the case. It has to return a new string with a single character in it. Because I just thought, I mean, why would it have to do that? Isn't it that we're just accessing? Isn't this just an object where the key? Yeah, the key is the index and the value is just the character. Isn't that, is that not like constant time? Unless, hmm, yeah, probably other stuff happening in JavaScript that I'm not aware of. Of course, there's a lot in JavaScript that I'm not aware of, but that I did not know. Because when you say S of X, it returns a string. Oh, I see, but that's just because that just due to the nature that it literally doesn't have a character type. Okay, yeah, I, I guess I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I had not heard about that before. So I wonder is, I mean, are, are, you, are you saying that maybe like this way is not even really that much more beneficial? Well, if I keep going this way, the time complexity depends on the string encoding. It doesn't change the time complexity. It, I just meant you're not avoiding creating new strings. Nice. This is good. This is why I like interacting with the community because that's that's something I probably I mean I may have learned at some point, but I haven't learned yet. So I'm glad that I, I stumbled upon. I'm glad I stumbled upon you, Steve. You're a good guy. Steve7411. So index plus plus here, then we do index. Okay, we keep doing this. Go all the way. They're the same index plus plus. Then we come over here. We do all index plus plus. Now at some point we'll get to this C for const word of words. But now if I say that if if index is equal to s dot length return true, like is that going to be enough? Because if I do apples, I'm not really sure. But I want to try it out. And I wish I had more test cases here. That's one thing I have to get better at, like generating my own test cases to test with, because there, there's just some that I'll forget. But let's submit this and see what we get. Okay, Z and Z undefined. Okay, so it's still it's that last one. So here we just didn't return anything because let's see, if index equals s dot length for const c of word, index plus plus. So we're done with that already. So I think I can also just return. Uh, return index is equal to s dot length. See if this works. Okay, sweet. Even if this is not, even if this is not faster, at least I'm happy that we tried something different. And, and at least to me, even though you know, with what Steve is saying, even though we have to create, even though we're still creating new strings, I'm, I guess we're not being as explicit with it as we are here. I think this is still a cool way of going about it. At least it's just a different perspective of approaching the same question. So I'm always down for that, to like try the same question in multiple ways. Sort of almost how we were gonna do the other one using bitwise manipulation and like being able to remove all the branches. I think that's pretty cool. But I definitely want to look into, and also like this right here, 
like I also want to look into this part, like the time complex, uh, the time complexity depends on the string encoding. It doesn't change the complexity. I just meant you're not avoiding creating new strings. So when you say, yeah, that's something I don't quite understand either. The time complexity depends on the string encoding because string encoding, that's not something I generally like deal with or even really think about, but, um, you want to do me, you want to do me an awesome, like favor, Steve, like, I would, if you can, can you just help me explain what this part means? And I'm going to wrap up the stream now. So that way I don't have to just like, I don't want to like rush you into giving me an answer or anything. But um, if you can actually leave a comment on the video, once it goes up on YouTube and just explain that, that'd be awesome. Cause that's really something I want to learn. So I do really appreciate everyone's comments today. I think we had a pretty fun stream. We had a lot of like viewership, which I'm very happy about. Also a quick recap. So I'm going to be saying this every day, but when I'm, when I'm going on, I'm going to be going on vacation, let's see in 12 days and I'll be recording videos. Like after this stream, I'm going to record a video and it's going to come out at a scheduled time during my vacation. That way for you all, it's transparent. It's not going to be a live video, but at least you'll still have some content to view while I'm out. So just wanted to remind you all of that again, again, it's going to be transparent. You won't really notice it, anything. You'll see the videos coming out. And as far as you know, and for all intents and purposes, it's live. Except that you won't be able to chat. So with all that being said, thank you all so much. I think, wait, did we hit 300? I think we hit 300. Yes, nice, perfect. So we did three questions to get to 300. I think that's a great way to end today's stream. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow for a medium live stream. And if you're in Florida, take care. And even if you're not in Florida, take care. Happy coding and see you all next time. Later. Oh, thanks, John. Appreciate it, man.